Shabab, now look here. This is the reaction mixture. As you can see, it consists of two white solids, two white reactants. The first one is sodium phosphate, dodecahydrate, and the second reactant is barium chloride dihydrate. As I told you during the theoretical explanation, when they are in their solid formula, nothing will happen. No reaction is going on. So what I'll do now, I'll weigh about 20 gram of this mixture. Once I did this step, please record the reading of the balance. Okay, I'll take it out. Here is about 20 gram, more or less, I am not sure. Just take the reading of the balance as it is. Don't round it, please, because this mass is important for the calculation part. It should be about 20 gram. Yeah, take the mass, please. This is the mass of the reaction mixture. Now what I do, I will transfer this reaction mixture to a bigger beaker because we need to add 200, 200 milliliters of water, which means that this beaker will be very small. So I will transfer them here to this beaker, okay? And I will add 200 milliliters of water. I already prepared here, I measured 200 milliliters of water. Why water is important? Again, because water will dissolve the two solid materials and immediately after adding water, the reaction will take place in the aqueous medium, okay? So I'll add water gently. You can see the formation of this cloudness, this white precipitate. It means that the reaction immediately takes place, but it needs long time. How to make time shorter? By heating. So I put this reaction mixture here on the hot plate. Here is the hot plate. I can control the heat. Look, here is the maximum performance or the maximum temperature of the hot plate. But I'll put the heating level here scale between five and six. This supplies or this means that the temperature will not overcome or will not exceed uh, 80 degrees Celsius. It's very important. It's very important to heat gently without boiling. Why? Because in the last step, after 20 minutes of heating, what we will do? We will take the beaker and we will allow the two layers to be separated from each other completely and the precipitate to settle down. This step will be very difficult if we boil the mixture. Did you understand it? Okay, so we'll just keep it here at this low temperature for about 20 minutes. Okay, I'll mix it. Then we'll come back after 20 minutes to show you what is going on. Okay, Shabab, now look. After 20 minutes, the reaction is complete. What I did, I just took the reaction from the hot plate and I put it for five minutes. Why? To allow the two layers to be separated from each other perfectly, as you can see here. This is the aqueous layer in which the re excess reactant is exist. And this is here the solid layer which represents the precipitate of barium phosphate. Okay, now what I'll do. Carefully, I will decant two portions of the aqueous layer. Why? To use them, as I said, to test the excess reactant and the limiting reactant. This is the decanting like this, carefully. About 40 milliliters, 40, 50, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think this is enough. And I will 
take another sample to confirm the initial result of the scheme. This is the second sample. Yeah. So here what we got. Here we have the two portions of the aqueous layer that I will use in order to investigate the excess reactant and the limiting reactant. And here we have the remaining aqueous solution with the precipitate. The mass of this precipitate is very, very important as I told you. So what I will do in order to collect it, I will filtrate it. How to filtrate it? It's very easy. Please take the mass of this filter paper. Record the mass of the empty filter paper. Yes, take it now. Then prepare the filtration system. I have a, a ready one here. I'll use it. Okay. This is the same filter paper, same size, same everything. And I will start filtrating the remaining mixture. To facilitate this step and to make it, uh, um, to make it easier, I'll do or I will try to decant as much as I can from the aqueous layer. Okay? And this is what I am going to do now. I will decant the aqueous layer yeah, I'll stop now now I'll filtrate the remaining mixture like this complete the filtration If you still have some of the white precipitate inside the beaker, just add a few amount of water, two or three milliliters of water, to make sure that all precipitate has been collected or will be collected. That's it, okay? Now we'll wait until the filtration is over. After that, we will dry the filter paper, then we'll reweigh it. Subtract the mass of the empty filter paper to get the mass of the precipitate, which is barium phosphate. Keep this mass because we'll use it in the calculation part. This calculation part, inshallah, will be conducted during the lab session. I'll show you all steps in details, okay? But this mass is very, very important and basic. Now, what we will do, or what's the scheme? How can we apply the scheme that I explained during the procedure part, during the uh, theoretical explanation part? I'll take this portion. This is portion number one. According to the scheme, as you can see there, the board, we have to add one milliliter of sodium phosphate. Here is sodium phosphate already prepared this is sodium phosphate solution so what i'll do now i will take one milliliter about one milliliter more or less it doesn't matter okay i'll add it here in one shot then we'll see what will happen what happened can you see any difference anything happened no, nothing happened at all. What does that mean? It means that when I added sodium phosphate to portion number one, which has been taken from the aqueous layer, sodium phosphate didn't react, which means it didn't find barium chloride in the aqueous solution of portion number one. 
What does that mean? It means that barium chloride consumed completely, and this is the definition of limiting reactant. Limiting reactant is the reactant that consumed completely. So here the initial conclusion is as follows. Our conclusion of this test is that barium chloride is the limiting and sodium phosphate is the excess. طيب, how can I confirm this result? To confirm this result, I'll use portion number two. This is portion number two. Sodium phosphate is the excess reactant. This is the initial conclusion. To confirm it, what I'll add this time? What do you think? I will add the second reactant, which is barium chloride. Okay? So look here, follow me please. Here, I have barium chloride. This is barium chloride solution. Now, I will take one milliliter of barium chloride and I will add it to portion number two. This time, white precipitate must appear. Otherwise, our procedure or our work is wrong. Look what happened. Can you observe the cloudness? I think it's very clear. So here I confirmed my initial conclusion, which was that sodium phosphate is excess and barium chloride is the limiting reactant. That's it. All steps have been conducted now and I am ready to proceed to the calculation part. But before that, the last step here, don't forget, we should wait until the filter paper and the precipitate is completely dry. Now look, we have one more step to be, uh, to be accurate. One of the products, look at the board there, one of the products is sodium chloride. Sodium chloride aqueous solution. So here, this wet filter paper contains sodium chloride because sodium chloride is one of the products. So now, if we dry it, what will happen? Water will evaporate and sodium chloride will stuck on the filter paper and it will mix with our product, with our precipitate. And this will little bit affect the calculations. This is one of the sources of errors. So how can we get rid of sodium chloride? We'll wash the filter paper by a small amount of water. Just two or three milliliters of water are enough. Okay, to make sure that sodium chloride will go through the filter paper and to remove it from the precipitate. So now I'll stop the video. I'll wait until the filter paper and the precipitate is completely dry and I'll come again to record its mass. After that, we can say that the whole procedure or the experiment is uh, performed completely. Okay. And now the last step here, we dried the filtration system as you can see here and this is the white precipitate of barium phosphate. Now what we will do, we will take it and we will wait. Take the reading of the balance, please. Yes, you can take it now. Now subtract this mass from the mass of the empty filter paper that we already recorded to get the mass of the product, which is barium phosphate. Keep this mass, record it in your lab manual. Everything is done now, everything is ready to carry out our calculations uh, during the lab session. Here we have the mass and here we indicated already which is the limiting reactant and which one is the excess reactant. Thank you for today and inshallah we will meet again during the lab session. Thank you.